if you really want to get fit on the bike, training plans and apps are okay, but they're not really ideal. They're not tailored to you, so you're always going to be leaving some level of fitness on the table. And they get kind of old because you're always having to do what a training plan tells you you have to do versus what you actually want to do. Now, you could hire a coach, but that's not necessarily ideal for everyone either, and it's definitely not ideal for everyone in the long term. So what if I told you that you could dial in your training like a coach, but without having to rely on a coach? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. And the process involves taking a training plan and using it as a template and customizing it to you. And this is actually how most coaches do it anyway. So if you really want to follow along and, and try this yourself, you could use a training plan that you've used and, and liked in the past. Or I also offer training plan blocks that are four weeks long and are in, really intended for you to customize yourself using the same processes that I'm going to show you here in this video. Now, I won't be able to cover every single scenario that a training plan might have, but we're going to get really close. So let's get right into it. But first, if you want to follow along with what I'm showing in this video and do it yourself, be sure to download the Self Coach Cyclist ATP in the link below. In it, you can plan your whole season with blocks, play with ramp rates to see what happens to your CTL, use my cheat sheet that has an assortment of guides and zone calculators, and see example seasons that you can use as reference. And if you really like the process, there's blocks available for purchase that you can customize, all the way down to individual workouts with the provided instructions. Okay, so here are the steps involved in customizing a training plan. And there's only two. This actually doesn't have to be all that complicated. Okay, so the first step that you want to do is take a look at your plan and look at each week and identify the two hard days. And by that, I mean, by, by hard, I mean any day where you're doing anything harder than zone two. So look at those days and we're going to customize those depending on the type of workout it is. So if it's a tempo, sweet spot, or threshold, we're gonna extend our time and zone. Or if it's a VO2 type workout where it's like that really high intensity, we're gonna bump that power up to almost as much as you can go. All right, so that's the first step. The second step is gonna to be to adjust our zone two rides so that the total TSS of the week matches what's in our ATP. And this is a critical step this will give you a beautiful looking performance manager chart. And this is kind of, uh, I think, think of it as one of the key ingredients to customizing a plan to you, to your schedule, to your current level of fitness and to your goals. So a few things to mention here, two hard days per week. If your plan happens to have three, kind of consider that third day as optional. It's actually not going to make a real big difference in your, in your, and your fitness and your adaptations, it's these two hard days that you really want to get right. So what I'll do is if my plan happens to have a third day in it, I will treat it as optional. So if I'm in the mood and I have the legs, I might do that third, third hard day. I might not try to absolutely bury myself, but I might just do it. If I'm not in the mood or my legs don't feel that great, I'll just replace it with zone two. All right. If your plan happens to have four hard days in it per week, it might be that plan might either be a no go or that fourth hard day just completely nicks. the The one exception would be if you're trying to do an overload or you're really in those last last month or so before you're trying to peak for your main event. But four hard days in a week, overall, from what I've seen, is not very sustainable. It doesn't allow you to get enough zone two. And so, and it gets very complex, especially if you're trying to self coach. And I just don't see a whole lot of benefit in that, like ever. This, the, the next thing is zone two. Zone two luckily has grown in popularity. Um, there's lots of talk about it. We kind of have all heard of the benefits of zone two. And, and it's true, zone two is so valuable. But the big question is, how much zone two do you actually need? In this, with this method and this system, I'm telling you exactly how much you'll need according to your current level of fitness. Okay, so let's talk about these two hard days and exactly what our goal is in customizing each. And I like to think about it in terms of a power duration curve. 
maybe you've seen this before, but your power duration curve is unique to you. No two cyclists are the same. So what we have here on this is on the X axis down here, we have our time and this is on a log scale. So just notice that. And then Y axis is your, is your power in Watts. This red line represents your max power for various durations. And then of course we have our orange dotted line here, and that's your FTP. The whole point in doing intervals in, in the first place is to put stress on your power duration curve. And really anywhere that you put stress, you're gonna get adaptations there. Um, we, we have strategies for, for how we go about doing that, but kind of think about, you want to, you want to when you're doing intervals, you want to put stress somewhere along this curve. So let's look at a, a quick example here. And this is kind of extreme, but with this athlete, if he was to do one interval, eight minutes, and let's say about 150 watts, it's just too easy for him. He's not really stressing his power duration curve anywhere. So this is too easy. He's not going to get adaptations. It's not going to be all that useful. So what we need to do is actually move this dot somewhere along this power duration curve. And so let's just say he was doing some kind of an interval here. Let's just say that's five minutes and he's at 400 watts. He's gonna get some adaptations here. If he's doing, he's doing some intervals right in this area, he's putting stress on his power duration curve and he's gonna get some sort of positive adaptations there. Likewise, he could also move it out, out here, right? So if he's doing some intervals, that might be something like a sweet spot and he's doing multiples of those. Maybe this is about an hour and a half. He's putting stress on his power duration curve right here and this is where he'll get adaptations. So any point here on your power duration curve is important. We're always trying to make improvements in that. We want this line to go up as much as possible and we want it to extend to the right as much as possible. And we really have different strategies based on your FTP. So any kind of power that's kind of just below your FTP, we want you to just be able to sustain that for as long as possible. That, that's all your muscular endurance stuff. So we're trying to move the slope of this line over to the right as much as we can. That actually does increase your FTP when we do that. It kind of drags this whole line over. And, and then any power target that's over your FTP, we want to improve that as well. So we want to move that up. So the type of work that we do for extending this curve to the right is, is all your sweet spot tempo and threshold stuff. And the variable that we change in those workouts is, is the time and the duration. And then vice versa, when we're trying to move it up, that's all our VO2 stuff. And the variable that we change there is intensity. So now let's get into the nitty gritty details of how you customize each week. And we're going to start by a, with a sweet spot week as an example and go start to finish. And then we'll do a VO2 week. So here's an, an example week from an aerobic block. And we can see that this example week looks really nice. You can easily see that there's two hard days, Wednesday and Saturday. So we're going to customize those first. So notice that these are sweet spot, 3 by 12 and 4 by 10. And remember, our strategy is to extend our time and zone for each of these days. Let's get a visual of where we fall on a power duration curve with this athlete. And you can see that if we're only 36 and 40 minutes, our blue dot is right here. And we're really leaving a whole lot of fitness on the table by not putting more stress on, on our power duration curve out here. We need to obviously increase the amount of time in zone that we're doing these intervals to, to stress this area here. Now, how do you do that with intervals and how do you break all that stuff up? I have a cheat sheet, so let's take a look at that. This cheat sheet is actually located in your ATP under this tab. You can see right here, and, and this is available for free in the link below. But come over here into aerobic intervals, TIZ, that's time in zone guidelines. And so you can see what we have here. We're trying to customize that, that sweet spot so that we're putting stress on your power duration curve for, for whatever duration that happens to be for you. So here we have some guidelines, 30 all the way up to 90 plus. You can even do 120 plus minutes of sweet spot. And so what you really want to be thinking is how can you com consistently challenge yourself each week and each block by increasing your time and zone according to, to this chart right here. So maybe for you, let's just say for example, maybe for you 45 minutes is where you just happen to be maxing out right now. So 
45 minutes. Here are some options of, of how you can split that up into 40 minutes, 45 minutes. The actual length of, of the interval doesn't matter a ton. Obviously, you don't want to get it too short. And the rest period in between doesn't matter a whole lot either. It's, it's mainly your time and zone. And then continue to challenge yourself as you move throughout that block and, and even, even into next blocks. See how far you can get down this, down this chart. This is kind of the secret. If you really want to maximize your time on the bike during these hard days, kind of be thinking about how you can continue to push and extend that time and zone as much as possible. But getting back to our example, we remember we had about 36 and 40 minutes of time and zone for sweet spot that was kind of in this range. And for this athlete, 60 minutes is kind of where we wanted to be. That, that was a, a sufficient challenge. So we can come over here and here's some options on how to split that 60 minutes up. So now let's go over into training peaks. And, and show you exactly how I go about splitting this up and making the, these modifications. So now we're in Training Peaks looking at our example week. And you don't have to use Training Peaks. I certainly like it. But the nice thing is that if you have your head unit or your Zwift account linked with Training Peaks, these workouts will just automatically come up for you on that day. So it's pretty slick. But let's go ahead and modify these two days. We want to bring these up to 60 minutes. So I'll, just in case you aren't sure how to do this, I'll, I'll show you how easy it is. You just click on the workout itself and then click over up in here to, to modify your intervals. And then just click on the interval that you want to modify and it'll bring you right there down in, in this area right here. So we want to change this to 15 minutes. So we're going to go 15 minutes. We're not going to change our intensity. And then we're going to increase the number of intervals. See, it says repeats three times. We're, we're going to change that to four. So change it to four. Right? So then the last step, of course, is to change your title. So you remember that, four by 15. So you have that in there, and it's just as easy as that. Now we'll just go ahead and click Save and Close. Now let's go ahead and do that same process for this Saturday ride. But we're going to do five by 12. Okay, so you can see just how easy that was to modify these two hard days and really dial these in for that athlete. And this can make such a difference in the world. We're, we could be talking about improving this athlete's FTP based on those modifications or it just staying the same. So it, it really makes a huge difference and it's just so easy. Now, one thing to, to, to note here is that when we change our, 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 our time in zone, we're changing the TSS for that ride. And so that affects the weekly TSS as well. So train total training stress score for the week has changed to 355 and it was 289. So this is just something to be aware of. Okay, so now for the fun part where we're gonna make this your plan just totally awesome. We're gonna adjust all of those zone two workouts so that our weekly TSS matches what we have as our goal TSS in our ATP. All right, so let's just jump into an ATP and, and show you kind of how all this fits together. Okay, so now I'm back here into the ATP and I'm just gonna continue with the example that I've been using in previous videos. And there's a tab in here if you wanna really kind of see it called YouTube example right down here. But just reviewing, this was an 80 mile gravel, gravel race that we were planning for. We worked backwards from there, identifying all our blocks. And then in the very last video, we, we entered in our ramp rates so that we had a nice progressive overload in workload and that we were really controlling our CTL really nicely. So we had previously done Let's just say it was a 400, 425, and a 425 TSS weeks in our last block. So the number we're looking for right here is, it, let's just pretend it's, it's this week right here, this um, 612. We are just looking for this, our, a goal weekly TSS so that our CTL is, is going up like we want it to. So we see here in our ATP that it's 486. Again, we didn't have to calculate that. We just entered in a ramp rate of five. And it's telling us that we need a 486 if we want our CTL to go up to 44. So let's go 486 is the number that we're gonna achieve with those zone two workouts. 
So now we're back to our week and we see that we're trying to get a 486 TSS week out of this and we're at 355 right now. So we need to add some TSS um, in the form of zone two right now. So let's just see how much we actually need. So let's do our calculator. So we got 486 minus 355 and we get 131. So we need 131 TSS added to this week and then we're, we're in good shape. So let's look for about that. So what I like to do is always start with a weekend zone two ride. And there are different adaptations that you get with a longer zone two ride. So I like to start, I like to prioritize right there. So we have our Sunday ride is only an hour right now and that's the longest we've got. So let's, let's make this a little longer. Let's just start with about two and a half hours, just kind of picking that and, and see what we get. Okay, so now we're at a 429. We're getting really close. I mean, we're just so you see, we're at you know 46 minus 429 is you know 57. You can kind of do that. But as a general rule, one hour of zone two is about 50. So you can just kind of like if, if you just need to just want that, just have that in the back of your head. That's handy. So we need roughly about an hour more of zone two within this week and to hit that 486. So one thing we could do is we could say we could make this three and a half hours. That's one option. Let's say, you know, another option could be to remove this rest day and add a Z add in one hour right here on that Friday. That's not really the, the preferred, I wouldn't recommend doing that often. You really wanna have two solid rest days in there. But if you need to, if you're really kind of pressed for time throughout the week, that is an option. But I, I use that as like a last resort. What I would suggest doing actually in here is we have these two hours on Tuesday and Thursday. I would just add 30 minutes to each and we'll probably get pretty close. So let's just add 30 minutes to each of these zone twos, see what we get. Okay, now we can see that our weekly TSS is 478 and our goal was 486, so we're, we're close enough. We are done with this week and ready to start following, following this custom plan. Anytime you're within about 15 TSS for the week of your goal, you're, you're close enough. So now it's just a matter of following the plan. And if you have other weeks, obviously you'd have other weeks and other blocks. You'd follow this exact same process for anything that's a tempo, sweet spot, or threshold. All right, so that is how you customize a sweet spot week. How I was customizing those the hard days of those sweet spots probably isn't too surprising, but how we're adjusting our total time of zone two per week so that our weekly TSS matches what's in our ATP. The way we're able to do that assures that our ramp rate is just right and that we're making really solid adaptations as we go. I think that's a little surprising. I don't see many um, people really talking about this method and how to do that, but it is a, a total game changer. If you really wanna get your CTL up, like 85, 90, even 100 plus, you wanna do it gradually and, and this is how to do it. So now let's talk about doing the same, kind of the same process for customizing a VO2 week. There are some important nuances though. So let's get right into that now. All right, so now we have a VO2 example week. And so we're again, we're gonna pick our two hard days. Obviously that's Wednesday and Saturday and we are gonna start customizing those two days first. So again, we're gonna be customizing the intensity on these days, not the duration. So one thing to, to just kind of keep in mind, just to drive this home, is that when we're talking about intervals or, a, or any kind of effort under FTP or, or your threshold sweet spot tempo, your zones are all based on FTP and, and it's standard. It's, it's pretty accurate. So we're all good there, but anytime we're talking about an effort that's over FTP, all of a sudden, that that power is not based on FTP anymore. It's actually custom to you. So let's actually take a look at three athletes and then see what that looks like on this graph. So here we have John Q, Sally, and Billy Bob. And all three of these cyclists have the exact same FTP. And we have plotted their power duration curves here together like this. Now, what we can see is below FTP, their zones are actually the same. 
yes, one cyclist can sustain that that power for longer than the other, but these the zones are the same, and, and so the, the, we're good there. But above FTP, we can see that our curves look quite a bit different. So John Q, we call him a sprinter because he has <clears throat> really good sprint power compared to his FTP and compared to others. Sally is an all-rounder. She's right in the middle. And then Billy Bob, his, his sprint power isn't as good comparatively to the others. So if each of these cyclists has to do a VO2 5x5, five five, we're going to be stressing this area of their power duration curves right here. And we can see that they're all different. And so if we do our little blue dot, we can see that at five minutes, if we really want to stress this area of, of each cyclist power duration curve, they're going to be very different in terms of intensity, and it cannot be based on FTP. So the question is, how do you know what power power to target here? So we definitely have some options there. So let's talk about that. The first option is really just to ignore power and just go full gas but repeatable full gas. There's actually a lot of coaches that recommend doing this just for its simplicity, and it's really not a bad idea at all. But you really want to make sure that your heart rate gets into that 90% plus of max heart rate. If you prefer to have a power target, you could actually invest in something like WKO software to understand your eye levels. And I know there's other software out there, but WKO is an extremely powerful analytics software, and, and it'll help you. If I, I will actually leave a link in the description below so that you can read a little bit more about eye levels and how WKO works. The one thing with WKO is it is, it is so powerful, it is, it, it'll give you way more than just VO2 max interval targets. And if you're not ready to invest in something like that, I actually have streamlined this so that you can actually just use my cheat sheet in the ATP to get your targets. So let's just take a quick look at how you do that in my cheat sheet. And you're going to want to enter in three numbers to understand what your VO2 max interval targets are. So the first one is your FTP and you just come in here under aerobic power intervals and enter in your FTP right here. And then next go to this section called the VO2 intervals power targets. And what you want to do is enter in your one minute max power and your five minute max power. So now based on those numbers, we can come in here under interval time and we can see what the theoretical max watts are for your four minute, three minute, and even your two minute intervals. Now, since when we're doing these intervals, we want them to be repeatable, we want to take off a little bit of power so that we can do them repeatedly. So under here, we can see interval power target. This is your watts that, you, that you're going to want to target. So if you're doing a five minute interval for this athlete right here, we can see that five minutes, the interval target power is 356. So 356 is your number. Now in, in training peaks, it forces you to enter that number in as a percentage of FTP. So I've got, gone ahead and done that calculation for you. So all you have to do is enter in this 108 as a, as a percentage of FTP in training peaks. And same for all of these, the four minute, three minute, and two minute. I've calculated those percentages for you. So let's go into training peaks and just enter in 108% for this athlete. Okay, now we're back here in training peaks. And so here's our VO2 five by five that we want to customize. So we're just going to click it. Then we'll click the workout and then we'll click the individual intervals themselves. And you can see here that for this athlete, just standard was a uh, 115% of FTP was a 379 watt target. And remember from the cheat sheet, we we're trying to get 356. So this 379 is just too high. And so that cheat sheet gave a percentage of FTP of 108. So we'll just enter in 108 here and it should say 356. And yep, it went to down to 356. Now in terms of how many intervals to do, standard is five. That's pretty typical. I can also tell you that five is hard. That's a lot. So if you're if you're struggling with your intervals to get to five and the average power for that interval starts dropping by say 15 or 20 watts from, from target, you're done. But if you wanna increase this to, to more than five, that's okay but you really want to make sure they're high quality. 
that's really the most important thing. So your power needs to be high and, and pay close attention to your heart rate as well. That really needs to be over 90% of max heart rate. As long as those things are, are high, you can keep on going. So now this workout is customized. So we'll click save and close. Now we will repeat that same process for the workout on Saturday. So now we've customized our two hard days and just take note that our weekly TSS is a 315. It was a 335, so it went down by just a little bit. Not a lot, but just take note of that. So the next step would just be to customize our all of our, our zone two so that our weekly TSS matches what's in our ATP. Again, we're, we've gone into our ATP, we have a ramp rate and we have a weekly TSS goal and we're gonna try to match that using zone two durations. Now, I'm not gonna go through the details of how you do that again, but there is one difference when you're looking at a VO2 week, you have actually have a little bit more flexibility. You can add in zone two on the Sunday make it a long ride. You can certainly add in zone two on this Tuesday and Thursday. You could even substitute it for a rest day. Again, I don't recommend it, but if you need to do that, you can. But you can also add in zone two to these VO2 days. But if you do that, I recommend putting that in, in that zone two prior to doing your actual intervals. It, it gets a little complex with the pathways involved in there, but do your zone two prior to doing your intervals and not after. In the beginning, I hinted on what I think is the biggest benefit to training like this, and it addresses one of the top issues that I see. It's certainly the top issue that I had before I really learned how to train, and that is motivation and your desire to just do what you want to do. When you modify a plan like this and really make it your own and spend a little bit of time thinking through it, your desire to want to follow it actually goes way up because it's actually all your idea. So. Give this a try, modify a plan, kind of make it your own, and, and just watch what happens to your motivation to, to want to follow that plan. If you didn't catch any of my other videos on, on this process, I'll leave links right here. But again, my name is Eric Knutson, and I will see you in the next one.